I'm Jerry Agar for Ezra Levant. So apparently Russia is not like Canada. Hey, who knew? Turns out the nation that not so long ago as the Soviet Union recognized no individual rights is still emerging in that regard and is less accepting of gays than we are. So there's a call from some to have the Olympic Committee strip Russia of the upcoming winter event, sending it to another location, with Vancouver named as a possible. Well, that won't happen. It's too late to do something that complicated, and who has the facilities ready to go for such a major event? Plus, I'm not sure there's a history of the Olympics doing what activist groups want them to do. And I'm really confused. The mantra from the left for decades has been that it isn't the place of the West to police the world and export our culture. I think we have a superior way of life in North America. Freedom of speech, of religion, and association are all cornerstones of what I think a just society is. I think it's barbaric that some countries treat women as second-class citizens. But again, I'm told, Jerry, it's not our place to judge. We've been talking all week about the collective yawn from the media, the government, and yes, gay activists, when radical Muslims gathered right here in Canada to put on a hate fest against the Jews, complete with a call to kill them all. In Muslim Arab nations, whose philosophy is supported and spread by those very activists, gays are killed. In the Israel those activists hate, gays are safe. In Toronto, there's a group called Queers Against Israeli Apartheid, which is an illiterate contradiction in terms meant to mask hatred of the Jews. Most other gays let them be in their hate. Out of the University of Toronto, there's an event called Anti-Israeli Apartheid Week. Well, ditto. Pretty much crickets from the gay community over an event that supports the gay-killing nations over the gay-friendly nation. Why is it suddenly different now when it comes to anti-gay laws in Russia? If we're really concerned that our athletes will face persecution or prosecution in Russia, perhaps we shouldn't send them. But making young people who've put themselves through a punishing training schedule their entire lives fight this fight, unless they individually decide to do so, would be the wrong thing to do. This is hardly the first time a nation with a terrible human rights record has hosted the Olympics and, hey, China, I'm looking at you. But I don't remember this much of an outcry. The idea of jailing someone for an opinion or a personal lifestyle that hurts no one is abhorrent to me. I think the laws in Russia are asinine. Hey, but they didn't ask me. If you're invited to a gay wedding and you don't approve, should you accept the invitation and then heckle? Should you decline? The best option is probably to realize it isn't the time and place to have that debate, and if you go, you shut up and try and enjoy yourself. Russia's Minister of Sport put out a statement calling for people to calm down. He said that the rights of athletes and others will be respected. But of course, they have a different idea of what those rights are. If someone, athlete or otherwise, goes to Russia during the Olympics and makes a spectacle of themselves in order to make a point, they should not be surprised if Russia makes a point as well. We can all have our opinion on who's right and wrong, but along with the opinion that Russia is behind the times, is the idea that nations don't take well to having guests embarrass them in public and sometimes you have to pay the penalty for the courage of your convictions. If we're going to have a truly international event, we will always have to truck with nations with whom we disagree. And of course, they disagree with us. When we have hosted the games, did we insist that visiting athletes obey our laws? Not all nations like our laws. Maybe we should have the Olympics just for the very few democratic, freedom-loving countries that have good human rights records. But I'd actually rather we start with that at the UN first. I'd be a lot happier if all the democratically elected leaders of the world got to sit at the big table and make all the big decisions, leaving the tin pot dictators off on their own. You know, like the kids relegated to a card table in the kitchen at a family dinner? I mean, they're there, but nobody really cares what they have to say. They're not voting on the family budget. Russia doesn't have the best human rights record, but they don't have the worst. If there was a strong history of activism from the gay community and the media against those nations in the Arab and African world that do have the worst records, this call to action would be easier to support. But activists from those backward nations, as we've seen, can openly spread their hatred on the streets of this nation, and the gay community and the media and society in general can't seem to get too bothered about it. British entertainer Stephen Fry has compared going to Russia for the Olympics to having gone to Germany under Hitler. And he's compared what Russia is doing now with gays to what Hitler did with the Jews. Yet, 
you can call for the destruction of the Jews from the streets of Toronto and no activists of any kind other than here at Sun News apparently will say a thing. I have no patience for uh, countries that um, uh, try to treat gays or lesbians or transgender persons in, in, uh, in ways that uh, uh, intimidate them or are harmful to them. National Post columnist Barbara Kay joins me now. Do you have your tickets for the 2014 Winter Olympics in Vancouver? <laughs> <laughs> it's going to be in Vancouver, Barbara. Oh, I don't think so. <laughs> no, I don't think so either. Now, uh, what I was trying to point out in my opening monologue, and I, I, I suspect you'll agree with me here, is there's a lot of hypocrisy going on here uh, in this issue. There's so much hypocrisy, lots to spare. <laughs> Yeah, um, they, and, and, and we can say that without defending Russia's position. No, I don't defend Russia's position at all. And I think uh, there's lots of ways to address that position, which is a, a very negative one, a horrible one. But I don't think uh, boycotting the Olympics is the way to do it. Well, what is the way to do it? I think you've got to make a lot of public statements. I think you've got to get uh, social media going that embarrasses them. I think uh, uh, protests in front of their embassies make a mockery of them, ridicule them. You know, uh, governments, uh, especially governments that are autocratic and have no sense of humor, like Putin's government, uh, they are uncomfortable with, uh, with global you know, condemnation or at least condemnation from countries they're trying very hard to impress uh, with their um, with their power and uh, you know authority and and I think you know uh, they they would not like to be marginalized by Europeans and North Americans uh, for any length of time. Yeah, uh, and I think there is the possibility of an embarrassment for Putin as opposed to, say, somebody like Ahmadinejad, who seems beyond embarrassment. Oh, they're beyond. I mean, that's why I think very few people uh, get on their high horse about it, because they realize it's a complete waste of time. But uh, Russia is somewhere between a Western and Eastern. I'm not quite sure how you would position Russia, but it certainly wants to be thought of as a modern nation mm -hmm. um, and that means uh, be seeking approval from Europe and North America. Well Stephen Fry, a British entertainer, weighed in pretty heavily with this and is quoted uh, extensively and uh, took up the issue of whether politics and sports ought to go together and he said the idea that sport and politics don't mix, connect, is worse than disingenuous, worse than stupid, it's wickedly, willfully wrong, everyone knows politics interconnects with everything, for politics is simply the Greek for to do with the people. Uh, sounds like a pretty good argument. No, it's a bad argument in, in the 20th, 21st century. Uh, either you have the Olympics as an athletic uh, meeting. They're tremendously expensive, very difficult to organize. It's a huge, big thing. Uh, athletes all over the world spend their whole lives preparing for this. Uh, either you keep it totally athletic, or if you admit uh, that you're going to allow it to be political, then you have to uh, acknowledge the pain and suffering of every single group that comes up and says, well, you know, you, you, didn't, you boycotted the Olympics for the gays. Why aren't you doing it for the Uyghurs? And why aren't you doing it for uh, the Christians that are persecuted in the Middle East? And, you know, uh, it, yeah. it, becomes, uh, it becomes then a kind of bickering over who is suffering the most and uh, what price people should pay. But I, I don't think it should be paid on the backs of athletes, even if it's hypocritical. And it is political. I think you have to pretend sometimes that an event uh, is apolitical just so it'll happen. Yeah, uh, not so much an issue in the Winter Olympics because the Arab countries tend not to be involved. Well, Iran that's true. <laughs> yeah, no, but I'm going to bring a point here. The, uh, Iran is occasionally involved in the Winter Olympics and maybe this time, but a lot of the Arab countries are. But following your point, Barbara, very quickly, the Summer Olympics are, you know, two years later, are coming around and legitimately all Western women could say, you shouldn't do the Olympics as long as the Arab countries are allowed to participate. It could just get out of control. You're 100% you're right. Uh, I think we just have to, uh, I mean, listen, Israel's been going to the Olympics all these years and ignoring the fact that they are marching beside countries that would love to see them exterminated off the face of the earth. They just, they just get on with it. Uh, they don't let it interfere because to say, I cannot you know, be beside these people at an athletic event is to say, I've given up. Um, I just, you know, my cause is so, is so important. I'd rather be isolated uh, and just sit home while everybody else is having a great time. I, I think it is actually uh, more courageous and more appropriate to go and just do it. Well, uh, do we have to, though, give a point here to Stephen Fry and George Takei and the others that they have joined in with? You and I are talking about it. 
Well, look, that's their issue. I mean, they're gay or they're, they're sympathetic to the gay issue. Uh, where was Stephen Fry uh, when Jews were being persecuted in Russia or when, uh, you know, after the massacre in, in 19, uh, what was it, 76 or 80 in Germany, in Munich? Uh, did he say, well, uh, we shouldn't allow Arab countries in, you know, because they sponsor terrorism, we sh they shouldn't be allowed in in the next Olympics? No, that wasn't his issue. This is his issue. So now he's hot under the collar. I give him a point for logic, uh, yeah. but you know, logic is not always the way we uh, we conduct international politics. Well, I, I'm giving them the point in that we're talking about it. Other people are talking about it. Maybe what happens is everybody realizes you can't get the Olympics to switch to Vancouver. We're not going to take the athletes out of the Olympics. So. What would be the next thing to do? You've made some suggestions. Maybe they say, yeah, you know what? Go do an, uh, an event in front of an embassy or embassies around the world. Uh, so if it gets to that next step, then maybe something's been accomplished. Yeah, I mean, uh, start a social media campaign that hooks up with r uh, Russian activists, gay activists, highlight them, you know, uh, uh, light a candle for them. I mean, there's all kinds of ways to make a point and to shame governments, but it may be that nothing will help. Uh, we just have to stand by helplessly and watch. But we've stood by helplessly and watched uh, stuff going on in Africa. Gays are suffering, uh, but we don't say much about them because they're dark-skinned people. So, you know, uh, we have uh, in Nigeria, you know, if somebody gets uh, executed because they're gay or put in jail, we don't have anything to say, but now it's Russia. So there's a tremendous amount of hypocrisy around this topic, I would say. Yeah, uh, and, uh, you know, it, it's probably actually not going to get better because uh, while you've made this great point here that we can't take up every cause, uh, people might say, you know what, you can attach your cause to the Olympics and, if nothing else, get a lot of conversation about it. You made a great point, though. Should, should women not boycott the Olympics uh, if, if the Arab countries or, or not just Middle Eastern countries, uh, many Muslim countries elsewhere, you know, women are second-class citizens. Should, should, should they not boycott the Olympics, all women? Yeah. You can't, it's too, big a, it's too big a problem. It's too big a problem to attack with uh, boycotts. That's too simplistic. Well, what gay athletes need to do in particular, I think, in this particular circumstance, is essentially accomplish what Jesse Owens accomplished. And that is, uh, you know, go into the lion's den and win. And stand yeah. there with a gold medal. That's the best thing they can do. I totally agree with you. I, we're on the same page, and I'd just love to see a gay athlete uh, win uh, and just stand there, you know, in, in, in many of the sports, uh, standing with his head high and people cheering. I think that would do more to shame Putin and embarrass him than just about anything. Barbara, always great to talk to you. Thank you. Thanks so much for having me.